Hello everybody, welcome back to some Planet Zoo. We are back in Riverside Zoo today. Uh, this started out being my franchise zoo build that I've been working on for, oh, I don't know, a while now. Uh, but as of today and the recording, actually when I started recording this, it is no longer a franchise zoo. I just decided that it would probably be best suited to go ahead and turn this into a just a, a sandbox because at this point, the zoo is making so much money that nothing really matters as far as like trying to save up money or anything like that. So I just thought it would be best just to go ahead and just turn it into a sandbox and, and that way I would have a lot more freedom, especially with animals and stuff too, because I have started using some of the mods and there's been so many I've been seeing here lately that are just really awesome. And there's been tons of animals and stuff that have popped up that I, I kind of have been wanting to use, but then lately they're modding even more stuff in the game, such as like how paths work and how building pieces work and like lots of other stuff and I really wanted to get in on this and I thought now would be the best time so yeah since none of the stuff was really mattering in franchise anymore I I think it was just time to just go in and transfer this over to a an actual sandbox suit so what we are doing today is we are going to be working on a brand new habitat uh, a lemur island, so to speak. Uh, this is going to be kind of right at the entrance between the Australia area to the left and the Congo to the right. And first thing we already have, I pretty much had already planned this out that this was going to be here. Originally, I thought about putting penguins here, but I really want to want to put the penguins down around the safari area as you go into Australia from there. I wanted it to be done in that direction. So this one, I just thought, you know, let's go ahead and, and just kind of transfer this over. So I'll, I have, in order to make time, I guess you could say, to to get this video not as long as some of mine usually are. Uh, it's still going to be a little long, but um, I decided I would just go ahead and like take out some of the construction work here. Uh, obviously, you guys don't want to see me place rocks forever and ever and ever, so there was a good good amount of footage here of me just placing rocks and stuff. So I just thought, well, we'll cut that short. Um, and it pretty much makes up the backbone of what we are building here. It shapes everything out. And I like the idea that um, the visitors to the zoo can kind of come down here for an idea of where it's located. It's, just, it's over by the red panda and the peacock exhibit. It's over in that general direction. Um, and then kind of you walk down this path into the area and then right in front of you is this little pit, so to speak. Um, it, I caught a lemur island, but it's not really an island because there's no water in her or anything. But it's it's more of a lemur pit, <laughs> I guess. Uh, they are kind of on on their own over this on this little piece of land here, though. That's blocked off by all the the rocks and concrete and stuff. So I, I really like that idea. Uh, so we're gonna take and we're gonna lemurs love to climb, and I, I thought it would be good to let's give them a lot of climbing things. So we're going to take and put these uh, these faux trees, these rock trees, kind of that were that come in the aquatic pack, are really really cool, and I wanted to try to use them in this field a little bit here, as you can see. So we're gonna attach some ropes to some branches here, and also some poles, and do some other stuff, and we're gonna make them lots of things to climb around on because that's one thing they really like, and it also it it gives the visitors to the zoo, our guests something to actually kind of take a look at here so yeah not a whole lot to really talk about in this particular section so I'm just gonna kind of let this play out and then when something pops up that I do want to talk about I will of course discuss that Now for this particular section, I kind of wanted to, I didn't want just like straight ropes and stuff going across. I thought I would give it a, a little bit of def, so to speak. And I thought these hanging ropes, I, I really wanted to use the hanging ropes. So I put some hanging ropes coming from the bottom of the ropes. And I didn't know it at the time, but the lemurs were actually climbing on those too, which is kind of interesting. Um, I'm also adding a little bit of realism here by putting these, uh, these rope bundles on the actual branches and kind of show it kind of like where the 
the ropes are tied to those and that's kind of how they're coming out so Uh, one of the things I kind of want to do right here, um, especially near the last pole right there and kind of the, the end of this rope line, was I considered doing, like, digging down into the dirt and making, like, a little cave and then covering it with rocks and stuff and having it where the, the lemurs can kind of climb down into these caves that run underneath of the little island. So if they get down, like, in the, uh, in the area between the, the main piece of land and where the visitors and stuff are, if they get down in that little pit section down in there, then there would be caves that they can go in and then climb out, and they would be climbing up that, like, pole, maybe here, maybe this pole right here, maybe would work good. Uh, maybe I can make a couple places for them to climb up. I, I wasn't sure. I still may do that, but just for the sake of the build, since this video is already kind of long anyway, and I was really liking how everything was coming out, and I just didn't want to add more work onto myself, um, I thought, you know what, let's just leave it. If I like the idea, I can do it later. What do you guys think about that idea? Should I go ahead and... Should I do a, a lemur cave? Have it where they can kind of climb underneath of all this and, and climb up into the main area? Or, I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know. Now it is time for some foliage. So before I started placing all these, I had to find out like which foliage would actually work for the lemurs. Uh, we're going to be putting the ring-tailed and the red ruffled both into this one exhibit here and I had to look and see like you know obviously which areas am I going to be using um, as far as continents biomes things like that to see what they would like and that's something I did beforehand and then once I had it all set up and knew what I was going to be good it was just a matter of choosing the right trees and being able to put them there. I, obviously I didn't want to put trees too close to the outside because these little guys can jump and they have a tendency to escape. In fact, currently they are escaping somehow from the exhibit, but not by the trees. They're actually going through the rock walls. And I haven't figured out like how they're doing that just yet, but they seem to be escaping out of the exhibit real quick. And they say they always come back in, but I, I keep getting the warning that they are escaping and I can't figure out how they're doing it exactly. Like, how are you walking through a wall? But anyway, they do it. So they're magical lemurs. I really wanted to use uh, that that one plant that I was just showing. Elephant ears, I think is what they call it. I really wanted to use that, but there just wasn't enough space in the, the habitat for that. Now this right here, I'm taking this tree and kind of pressing it down into the ground. And at the time I wasn't sure, but I, I don't believe that the lemurs were actually walk on that section where the tree is pushing up out of the ground. Uh, I also kind of wanted to put a little palm tree on top of that center post right there. I thought that was a good idea too. And that was just me checking to see if the red ruffled and the, the ring tail used the exact same like continent and everything too, because I didn't check that beforehand. Now I'm just trying to place this little, um, I don't know, tree trunk and kind of get it just right where maybe they might climb on that too and then kind of climb it down and, or up out of the pit if they get down in there. Because I know we're going to put some like uh, things in there for them to play with, like the box and stuff. So if they were to knock the box like over into the pit, then you know, they might want to go down into the pit and play with it. Who knows? So I thought it might be a good idea to give multiple ways to kind of get out of there. And here we're just going to be placing the last of these palm trees just to give it a little bit more kind of uh, shade for them and just make it kind of nicer looking. And with all that done, it's now time to work on the back that the most of our guests and stuff aren't going to see, but our zookeeper areas and the shelters and stuff for our leavers and the places where they'll stay. Uh, I did want to kind of place some more rocks and stuff down in here. Again, just to give it a little more oomph, a little more extra kind of nice, cool things, basically. All right, so let's go back here. We're going to, obviously, we're going to level this out just a little bit more back here in the back, fix a few trees, and now another one of the mods that I have just recently started using is the 
one that lets you put the build pieces, you can rotate them in any way. Such as things that were typically on a grid are no longer on a grid. So that means it does make it a little more difficult to build because nothing is actually on a grid. So it, it slows me down a little bit as far as that goes. But it is really nice to have that freedom. It would be really cool if there was a button that you could press to like, I don't know, like a key or something, that like a shortcut key that would uh, fix it so you either got grid or no grid on items. That'd be kind of neat. I don't know how much coding that would require though on the modders part. Um, I, I don't mod the game myself, but I am definitely like, shout out to those who do, like uh, Lion Rider and, and Leaf and all the other people who are doing all these mods and stuff that for the game. Thank you so much for all your hard work that goes into that. I just want to say that. Definitely gives the game more play value. Like, just like RCT3 did. Like, RCT3 didn't really... Like, it was a fine game. But it was the actual use of mods and stuff that made the game so much better. And Planet Coaster didn't really end up having that much modability. Even though they gave us the Theme Maker's Toolkit where you could actually make like your own scenery and stuff for it, it's still not very moddable as far as that goes. Like only certain people can actually make the stuff. I've even tried my hand at it and it's not exactly easy. But as far as like the things that people are creating and stuff, there's some cool stuff that was on the Theme Maker's Toolkit, but you're very, very limited on what you can do with it. Um, like size wise, texture wise, and all these other things it's, it's very limited and it doesn't look like the limits for modding um, Planet Zoo are really even existent at all as far as I can tell because people have done so many awesome things <laughs> with some of the stuff on that and uh, I'm not sure how this is gonna work out because we got uh, as some of you may have heard we have a brand new DLC coming soon which is uh, also going to be coming with a 1.7 update with a bunch of free stuff, which is lots of cool stuff. So, like, any of you guys who have watched my early Planet Zoo videos, you probably got tired of me, like, ragging on the game and stuff constantly. And I have to say that after so much time has passed, and after the last few updates and the last few DLCs and stuff, and finally getting things that... You know, we have been kind of hoping for for the entire time. I I'm really enjoying the game a lot more. I think I said this in the last video for Planet Zoo as well, but I am very happy with the direction that the game has gone in, and the new DLC and stuff. Like I wasn't even sure like what they would even include in a North American DLC pack. So alligators, a moose. No, I don't. I'm not sure about the moose. We'll probably use that in Silverwood Zoo though, uh, since I am kind of giving it more of a a North American feel in that particular zoo. So when you when the actual DLC does come out, that's where you're going to see me really using a lot of that stuff at is in Silverwood Zoo, which is my other zoo that I started. And if you guys aren't watching that, you should definitely go check it out after this video. Um, so yeah, make sure to watch all this video. And uh, it, hey, if you're not a subscriber, if you're new to the channel, I might as well just go ahead and tell you now. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and hit that little bell down there to be notified whenever I, say, go live, uh, like I stream on YouTube now, or when a new video gets up posted on my channel here. You know, if you guys are interested in, in Planet Zoo, if you guys are interested in Planet Coaster, City Skylines, those are mainly the things that I do. I tried my hand at Sims, but nobody was really watching, so even though I really like Sims, I, I just couldn't get the views on those, so I'm not too worried about that one anymore. Uh, but I have been really in the cities. In fact, I'm actually currently working on my own uh, custom assets for City Skylines. I'm trying to make my own custom building. I have a little bit of trouble with the uh, the texturing and stuff. Getting it to come out just right. Uh, but I am working on it. And I even have a few people who have actually offered to, to kind of help guide me a little bit as far as that goes. So huge shout out to you guys as well for that. Appreciate that. Uh, back to what we're doing though, so back here, this is the, the back zookeeper area, the shelter for the, the lemurs. So this would be like the little sleeping cages and stuff back in here. I didn't really go into too much detail back here, but I probably went into more detail than probably what's needed. Uh, but I was just kind of making these little, like a little cage here. and Then I got to thinking about it and I was like, I really want to move the, the entrance and stuff over. So we moved the entire building over to the right some. And that's going to leave some space also behind here so we can maybe put some, uh, 
Maybe some zookeeper or caretaker places back here as well. Uh, that way our zookeepers and stuff don't have to walk all the way from the front or from wherever they're coming from. They can just kind of have their own little like hidden area back here. I, I thought it was a good idea. We can also put some facilities and stuff back here too, like uh, water pumps and electrical generators, things like that too. Just out of the way of the, the visitors and our guests and stuff. So. I could probably definitely go back at some point and, and go back into this and like really flesh this out a little more here. This was me realizing I needed more space in here for the uh, the sleeping counters for our, our lemurs here. So I was just kind of bringing it out a little bit. And then eventually we are going to be putting some sleeping spaces up there using some bedding and kind of giving them some shelves. I get that's sleeping shelves is what I'm going to call them. <laughs> Uh, I tell you what, this this new mod, which, which lets me place things down anywhere I want and be able to rotate things, has come extremely handy. I get, instead of having to worry about, oh, it's a one meter uh, slanted roof or a two meter slanted roof or, you know, whatever, I can actually have it slant any way I want, which is really, really nice. So, uh, again, not sure what's going to happen when one point one seven comes out uh, as far as the new DLC update and stuff, but... Hopefully it won't crash everything like 1.16 did. Uh, apparently there was a lot of, like all of the DLC just basically, or not DLC, but all of the, the mods and stuff just stopped working after the last update that they did. So everybody had to go back and like fix all of their, their updated animals and stuff. So hopefully that doesn't happen with this one, but I'm sure it probably will. Now here in this section, I was trying to rotate the floor down a little bit so that I could kind of get it. Uh, I didn't want concrete all the way in here. I just kind of wanted it on one side. And I was trying to make it mix well with the land. And the entire time I'm trying to do this, I never once, until the very end here, which, which you guys will see, thought, why don't I just raise the land? <laughs> uh, it didn't occur to me at the time. Like I was even trying to place down these rocks here to try to mix, like make a a mix between the two and then I was like right there is when I realized wait a minute what am I doing I'll just do this that dang it's fixed now so then we'll just give it a little bit of a rock flooring in here and then a little more outside here now I believe the next thing that I end up doing here is yeah we're gonna actually put the actual habitat itself in with the invisible walls and the you know we got to have the zookeeper gate all that stuff like that so we're just gonna kind of go around and kind of trace what I built here using the exhibit walls you know I feel like I've came a long way too from where I originally started with this game and having to you know figure out how to use all the exhibits and how to use all of the the fencing and, and habitat barriers and stuff and how to make all that work i definitely feel like i've come a long way from when the game first came out to where i'm at now and being able to to get things to work the way i want them to i will say though that a lot of the updates and stuff that they've done since the game first came out has also helped quite a bit as well though now for this section, I just kind of wanted to give some more stuff in here and just kind of give it some more clutter and uh, make it feel like, you know, it's an actual used space. So I thought, you know what, let's put some, I don't know, some wheelbarrows and stuff in here and some maybe some pallets and stuff. Although, thinking about it later on, it's probably not a good idea to have some of that stuff just sitting out because the lemurs are going to come in here. And, you know, like the sacks of food that I placed over there by the, the actual lemur cages. I imagine they're curious little guys, so they're probably going to try their best to get into those bags. I used to have a cat that uh, he would do the exact same thing, and like he would, you know how cats are. Cats don't want to eat the food that's in their tray, no, or, or their food bowl. They they want uh, if it's not fresh, they don't want it. So 
he would actually like scratch at the actual food bags and stuff and try to get the actual bags and stuff open to get it out of the actual food bags instead of eating what was actually in his tray. So I kind of imagine that, you know, the lemurs would probably do the exact same thing. And there I was having a little bit of trouble trying to place the water uh, fountain thing down there too for them to uh, get the water that they need there. And it's, that's one thing I, I kind of hope at some point there's a mod that fixes that is being able to place down like certain things like the bedding or the uh, the food trays and stuff being able to place those near the actual edges of the habitats and stuff would be really handy so if anybody who makes mods for the game is watching uh, hey there's a thought for you maybe if you can maybe make that work that'd be grand one of the things I'm using is uh, the no obstructions tool, so it kind of takes away path obstructions and stuff, and, and you can place the paths right next to the exhibit walls. You can even put it through the exhibit walls, actually. Um, and then you can do other stuff with it, too. So I was kind of hoping that that would actually fix that issue, but it didn't. Still a very handy mod, though. Alright, next thing we're going to be working on here is uh, for basically our zookeepers and stuff to get back here to the back of this area here. And we're going to just uh, kind of level out the land and kind of smooth it out a little bit. And we're going to place the path. I'm going to use staff pathing back here. Kind of jut it out from the building a little bit. One thing I'd kind of like to do at some point is maybe go back to some of these buildings and stuff that I built later on and add like little small details that don't really make a difference in the grand scheme of things but it really just makes it look more realistic such as like uh, electrical outlets and like walls and stuff like that and, and piping and, and all that little stuff like that now we're going to work on the education boards uh, I decided to do some custom education boards here for our the exhibit you can see the red panda exhibit back there behind us there and then also the huge Reptile Center back there as well. These little gutters, um, they're actually what I'm using there as to hold the stand up are actually the, the gutter pieces that are supposed to go on the edge of roofs. But the way that these are bit and stuff actually, they make really nice um, pieces here for like holding up billboards or whatever you need it for, like the. And that's just a, a window that I just kind of put front and back together and use the, the back of it to like the wooden look for it. I'll plop the education board onto it. And I think that looks quite nice. And then next we're just gonna put some speakers in here. And we're just gonna kind of finish up uh, the education board here. And from there, we're going to head into uh, a live play of the actual thing. That way we can kind of check out the lemurs and stuff and see how they react in their habitats and, and watch them and, and see the finished product. So let's go ahead. We'll do that in here in just a moment. Enjoy the rest of the build, and I'll see you guys in just a moment.
All right, here we are at the front gates, and it is extremely busy here today at the zoo. Must be everybody here to see the lemurs. So let's go ahead and step on into the zoo, and to kind of give you an idea of where it was that I actually put this. Like I said earlier, it's over by the red pandas, and if you're not familiar with that, we're just going to kind of zoom out here a little bit. So there's the entry plaza. Up there's the Reptile Center, and then we're going to go over to the left, and you can see the Pagoda kind of building type there. That's the Red Pandas, and that's the direction we are going to be taking. Past our extremely noisy peacocks over here, and the Vet Center, which, man, I love that Vet Center. It turned out so nice. It's so nice. Actually, the peacock thing came out quite well, too, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with how everything has actually come out in the park. Um... Not everything works the way it should, but everything kind of has come out nice. So, uh, Something else I've done that wasn't in the video was I've been placing down some different um, trees and stuff here to kind of get, uh, to fill in a few gaps and stuff here. Like right here, I had this kind of little section here where the path kind of separates and then comes back together. And the reason I did that is just, I don't know, just for looks. Um, but I was able to fill this in here with some trees and some bushes and flowers and stuff. Probably going to add some curves and stuff here and like really flesh this out a lot more as well. Same thing for over in this area too. Like, you know, you can see here we got a lot of stuff that's just it's not completely done yet. But it's a, you know, the whole zoo is a work in progress. Well, let's step down here to the lemur exhibit. So as you can see here, these are my awesome little educational billboards that I was able to make which I think turned out really well and I decided to put them one next to each other the problem with that is that both the speakers are playing at the same time but my thinking is that you just kinda like if you wanna hear about the reading tail you'd hit a button and it would talk about that and if you wanna hear about this one you'd hit a button and talk about that so maybe they might not actually be going off all the time like they do in the game so gotta suspend your imagination a little bit there and kind of just work with it. Speaking of lemurs though, here comes one of our little guys out of the cave here in the shelter. So let's go back here and actually take a look at the shelter real quick. So going back in here, they actually they really love to climb around on these walls and stuff too which I found which I think is absolutely hilarious. Uh, looks like a lot of the little guys are actually asleep back here which is that's fine. They can sleep. So wait, I put up these little poles here to the shelving here, and also put one that runs across the way here, and that should work just fine for that. And then, as you see here, this is the pallets and stuff that I had mentioned earlier that we put in. I'd like to come back in here and like uh, fix this up a little more at some point too. So, you know, it just looks a bit, a bit more realistic. So. Let's see what this little guy's up to. What, what are you doing today, little lemur? He may go climbing, may not, don't know yet. But I figure that this place looks pretty good for him. They've got a little keyboard over here. I have seen them play music and stuff on it. And then we've got the places, plenty of places for him to climb and like run around and stuff. They got lots of area, lots of room. Got the cardboard box, which they do love to push off into the little pit here. And they will actually get down into the pit, too. I've actually seen some of them down in here. They don't go far, but they do definitely get down in there. They also will climb on these vines. And they will climb on these little ropes right here as well. I figured that out, too. So, And just in case one of them comes over here and he wants to not get on the ramp, he can go underneath of this. But I, I have caught them. Uh, climbing on these little ropes and stuff here. I haven't been able to I've been trying to get a photo of them like perched right here because that would be the perfect photo for my like thumbnail, but I cannot get them to get up there anymore I know they will do it because I've seen them up there, but I can't get them to climb up there anymore They have a mind of their own. They just they do whatever they want and I can't make them do oh, This one's playing a keyboard Right there is your next Elton John, right there. <laughs> Alright, so this is the brand new lemur exhibit that we have. Uh, we will be back here in this zoo again. We've got lots of new stuff coming for Planet Zoo. We've got the new DLC coming soon. We've got 
uh, lots more mods and stuff that I'm going to be playing around with, all kinds of things that we're going to be working with. So stay tuned, and like I said, if you're not already a subscriber, hit the subscribe button right down below the video. Also, follow me on Twitter, because I can always use more Twitter followers. And that should be it. So, once again, guys, thank you so much for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed the build and the showcase here of the exhibit. And I will see you in the next video. So, wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Thanks for watching.